Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal and today in Cyberpunk 2077 we're going to talk about the Crystal Palace, one of the most famous and biggest space stations in the Cyberpunk universe, so let's get into it. Now, in the latest trailer we got from the Night City Wire in the end, we clearly see Ziggy Q, one of the medias in Night City, rising in front of a huge station. Now, this thing behind him is the Crystal Palace itself. The palace itself was constructed between 2000 and 2001, so overall 11 years for a space station is not too bad at all. The palace itself is owned by the ESA, or European Space Agency, but because it's also open to everyone else, you have countries setting up embassies there, because who wouldn't? It's one place you should have a foot in, because it's valuable not just for ESA, but for everyone else and general space travel. Basically, the station is a 5 toroidal ring structure. From the diagram itself, we can see that the first one is a living area slash park, then a residential torus, then a factory one, after that another residential one, and in the end living and park torus. These park torus are basically areas to relax and chill when you are up there. And yes, Space Station itself does rent these living spaces out to the rich, well, mostly corpos since they are the richest of them all. Of course, the way this palace works, it generates force so it's not zero-g once you're inside it. You are able to walk normally. The toroids actually spin at a decent rotation to provide 0.8g at the rim, which drops about 0.1g for every 275 meters of altitude towards the hub. You can actually see just from this that they thought about everything when they were actually making these books, so at least it makes some sense and I like it a lot, especially because everything in Cyberpunk Universe kinda makes sense when you think about it. Keep in mind these rings have a radius of 2.2 kilometers, the two outer rings here have a 2 meter thick leaded glass windows so light cannot enter, and other three central rings are entirely closed up. That's also why you have the name itself, the Crystal Palace, because of that glass. Of course, the station itself is protected from EMP strikes and also radiation, so you're pretty much safe when you're there. Keep in mind, those sparks actually provide oxygen for the station, and also there you have buildings, housing, restaurants, and pretty much everything else you need, if you want to leave Earth and spend some time there. Regarding the law, technically you cannot enter there with a gun. And as I mentioned, ESA owns the station technically, so of course the power was given to Interpol to handle the law and order up there, and all who try to do something are zeroed really fast. So overall the palace itself is a very important part of the lore and history of cyberpunk itself, and I'm glad CDPR started teasing at it during the trailer. Of course, I doubt that in the base game we're going to be able to go there, since in order to really recreate that area, I believe the best way would be to do it in an expansion, because it is huge, and in order to provide the best content, in my opinion, is to actually take time and just build it, you know, properly. Same for the orbital air space station we have in the game. It's there for world building, same as the water and everything else that is surrounding the Coronado Bay, and I'm also sure there will be at least something to do in that space station, maybe even a quest line, but of course it can be used later to travel up to the uh, Crystal Palace itself, so don't think that in the base game Orbital Air is going to play a huge role. I really don't think so, but of course I could be wrong. Of course, it will be interesting to see how much uh, the station itself has changed from 2020s, and since no weapons are a lot there, I'm sure that the story itself would be interesting, and if you include some horror and mystery in it, like crime or something like that, to actually solve something, a murder maybe, it could have enormous potential. But look, for now we just have to wait. CDPR will announce the expansions themselves before the release, and we shall find out again, you know, if it's going to happen, but this might never happen, like, we don't know it, but in my opinion it would be a giant waste. I think a lot of people are interested in space, and somewhat the best way to tell that story is to take people up to the Crystal Palace, and because the lore allows all of it, in the end the final say 
is up to CDPR. So that's it for the short cyberpunk lore video. I had a bunch of questions, you know, asking me what is Crystal Palace, what is going on with that, so I wanted to make a video actually to explain it. Of course, if you have any other questions about other events, people, whatever objects in the cyberpunk universe, you can tell me down below and I will be sure to make a lore video on that so you can know more about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about the universe, because the best way to actually play cyberpunk and to get yourself invested in cyberpunk is to know the lore. Also, if you want a more general overlook at the space lore, you can watch this video. Thank you for watching, smash that like button if you enjoyed it, and join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. I also have a Patreon page, if you are looking for another way to support the channel, you can do it through there, and huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone, bye bye.